what's up everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm paris and i make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business lady simone candle co first i want to say i apologize for this like glare situation going on i don't know what that's about this morning so i kind of have my camera angled more than i usually do um for this demo because i don't know what that's about this morning so we just gonna we just gonna work it out um, so you could probably tell by the title of this video, I am not only going to show you how I make my coconut soy candles, but I'm also going to take this opportunity to go ahead and get my holiday scents made and stocked and ready for sale. So let's just get started. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know what you need by now to start making candles. But if you're new here, I'm going to do a quick overview on what tools and things that you need and what I use to begin making my candles. First and foremost, you need a heat source, which I have my stove over here. You'll see that in a second. Um, you need the, if you are using the double boiler method, you will need your pouring pitcher and a thermometer. I actually have both of mine here because I am knocking out two cents at one time. Um, and then you need a pot with about an inch to an inch and a half of water getting ready to boil. So I am going to get that started while we're talking. Next, you'll need some type of stirring utensil. I use a flat spatula. This is pretty much kind of what the bakers use to spread their icing. It works for me. <laughs> Um, you need your cups to measure out your fragrance oil. I just use these Dixie cups from the dollar store. Of course, you need wicks. I use the CD12 wicks from Candle Science. You need alcohol and paper towels. This is not only to clean up, but I like to sanitize and wipe out my jars. But prior to using, you need wick stickers. If this is your choice of how to wick your candles, I, I like my wick stickers. And then, of course, you need your warning labels for when you're, you know, finished with your candles. You need something to clip the wicks and center them. So I like to use a combination of my clothespins or my wick bars here. Of course, you need your kitchen scale. This is my gram scale gloves to handle the wax because i just i just don't like that feeling on my hands <laughs> um you need jars this is my box of jars that just came in so we got that going i use the nine ounce straight sided jars i get these either from candle science or if they're out i'll use the flaming candle and then these are my baking trays that I use to not only preheat my jars in the oven, but to kind of space out and let them cure. And this is also easy transport for me based on where I let them go set. And then this is totally optional, but I like to use these little Avery circle stickers. I normally label my trays on what scent that tray is. Um, so that way I'm not getting confused when I am labeling my candles. And the star of the show, as usual, can't do nothing without this, right? This is the Coconut Soy Blend Wax, the C6. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that is what that looks like. I either get it from the Flaming Candle or Virginia Candle Supply. As you can see, it comes in slab form. So this is actually two slabs, one and two. This is a 20 pound um, slabs. So each slab is uh, 10 pounds. So that is that. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get our wax measured out. Um, I get a lot of questions about how I chopped this, these blocks down and I'm actually going to show you that here in a second and we're going to get them measured out in the pouring pots. I am doing two cents at one time. Um, so we'll just start with one pouring pot and I'm going to get that measured out 
um, here in a second. So I am making eight of each scent. So eight of my nine ounce straight sided jars. The net weight of my jar is actually seven pounds. So that is actually a total of 198 grams. So I am using a 6% um, fragrance load percentage. So um, I actually need 186 grams to make one candle. So I am going to times 186. I'm actually making six jars, six of each cent, I'm sorry. So I need 186 times six, which is 1,116 grams of wax measured out. So we are going to get that going. Got my scale tripped to zero. Come on. There we go. Zero, okay. And I'm going to move you all down here so you can see how I do my slabs. So I got my gloves on. So with my stirring spatula, this is actually a good dual tool, not only to stir, but to help me chop this down. And so you see the slabs here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just going to break off pieces with the spatula and measure it out. So I normally just kind of cut through and you see, I get like pieces like this, and then I start dropping it in there. So I just gather the pieces and drop it in. pictures done. I just chopped it up, measured them out to 1,116 grams, um, which is 186 times six each pan because I'm making six of my nine ounce straight sided jars, which nets seven ounces. So before we move on to measuring out our fragrance oil and prepping our jars, um, with the coconut soy wax blend, because I'm sure I'm going to get questions, the percentage, the fragrance load percentage, I use 6%. That is actually the recommended amount, and it actually has worked well for me from a cold throw perspective and a hot throw perspective. Um, I've done testing with it, and 6% is a good percentage from the fragrance oils that I use. Um, I do not see any fragrance oil seeping through. Um, it's very creamy and soft, easy to work with, and the, the throw is actually a lot stronger than soy um, with the blend. So I actually love the coconut soy blend. Um, I have no complaints thus far. Um, like I said, it's very easy to work with. And yeah, if you are wondering about how I got those numbers um, in terms of how much wax to measure out and how much fragrance oil that I'm about to measure out. Make sure you go back and watch my formula video, which is a few videos back, and see how I plug in my numbers with the jars that I use and the fragrance load percentage that I use. So now we are going to measure out our fragrance oil and get our jars prepped. So for my 6% fragrance load, I need um, 12 grams of fragrance oil to make one candle. So I took 12 times six since I'm making six candles and I got 72. So I went on and measured out my strudel and spice and my cranberry apple marmalade. So now we are going to go ahead and prep our jars. So to prep our jars, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and get them all set out. So I'm opening up my jars here, I'm making six. Go ahead and get some paper towels. I ran out of my um, 
my blue paper towel type cloths. I think I have it linked below. I have to place another like regular supply order. So I'm just using our regular house paper towels right now. But any 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 of any paper towels work, guys. I'm just taking a little bit of alcohol and just cleaning it out because sometimes during shipping, you know, you get the residue of it being in a card box and the manufacturing process. And sometimes there's dust and particles and that can kind of impact how your wax adheres to the jars. So just keep that in mind. It's always good to have a nice squeaky clean surface for your wax to adhere to. So that is all cleaned out. Let's go ahead and get our wicks. So I use the CD12 wicks from Candle Science, as I mentioned, that is the wick size that works well for my size jar. So we got that. And I'm going to go ahead and label my first tray. So this will be the Cranberry Apple Marmalade. So we're just going to do C-A-M for Cranberry Apple Marmalade. So that would be this tray. And now, let's go ahead and get our wicks with our wick stickers. Let's go ahead and wick our jars. fragrances of jars prepped, my strudel and spice, and my cranberry apple marmalade, all wicked and ready to go. So if you've been following me for a while, let me get down here to you guys. If you've been following me for a while, you know I like to preheat my jars. I actually just got these jars yesterday um, delivered and you know it's winter time. So they were super cold. And so I went on and heated my oven to 175 degrees and both trays are in there right now warming up. In the meantime, I had let my wax cooled to about 165 and that's where they are at now. So I'm going to go ahead and mix in um, the fragrance oils and stir and uh, wait until our jars is done. Let it cool to about 145 degrees and then we're going to pour. So first we'll start with cranberry apple marmalade. Oh, it smells so good. So we are going to go ahead and pour all of that in there. Go ahead and remove the thermometer. Get that out the way. And get my other stirring spatula. And I like to set my timer to two minutes, stir one direction for one minute, and then stir the other direction uh, for the last minute. It's just to ensure that your uh, wax and oil is binding as best at it as it can. I have pulled out my jars. They are pretty warm to the touch, so we are good to go. Let's go ahead and get this poured. Oh, let me get a paper towel to catch the wax dripping, just in case. Let's go ahead and get these bad boys poured. Oh, 
Oh, guys, it smells so good. So good. Try to have a steady hand when you're pouring as well. Take your time to avoid wax splashing. Remember, I've let it cool to 145. Now I'm gonna pour the strudel and spice scent. Here's the end result. I have my two fragrances poured out, six of each scent, which is what I'm gonna start off with, just to kind of gauge and see how they sell. Um, so that is that. Now I am going to start on the third scent and I'm going to do the exact same process that I did with these. pretty much repeated the same process for my third uh, winter scent and so my jars are in the oven warming up this has already cooled to 165 so we're going to go ahead and add the mistletoe fragrance which is this right here from candle science but these are all the scents that i use today so now we're going to do mistletoe we're going to add that and stir for two minutes and then once this cools to 145 then I am going to pour all right everyone that is it that is how I make my coconut soy uh, candles, not too much different from the soy, just the regular soy wax. Um, you can check out that video. And then I am actually going to make these same three scents in my wax melts. No process has changed with that. So if you're interested in seeing how I make my soy wax melts, you can check out that video as well. I'll link them both in the description box and in the cards. And yeah, I am going to leave you with this satisfying time lapse of watching um, my last batch of candles cure. So until next time, bye.